This video will show you how to get set up with 12D Synergy's Zero Connector. We will explain how to get the access you need to the Zero API, how to configure 12D Synergy to connect with Zero, how to set up the attribute mappings between Zero and 12D Synergy, and how to run a test of your connector to make sure that it works correctly. Connectors allow 12D Synergy to communicate with other software products. They run constantly in the background of Synergy to import data. This allows you to work in Synergy with the information that's been created in other software products such as jobs, tasks, documents, suppliers, clients, notes and others. It means that the data doesn't need to be imported twice. When information changes in the external system, it also automatically updates in Synergy. The attributes connected to those entities are pulled in. Because 12D Synergy's attribute system is so flexible, you can bring in any kind of data from an external software application. Each connector is downloaded as a separate plugin for Synergy. Once a connector pulls information into Synergy, you'll be able to use all of our standard features with the data, such as powerful search, change history, versioning and rollback. To get access to the Zero API, Open your browser, go to Google, and search for Zero API. Follow the link to the Zero Core Accounting API Zero Developer. This takes you to the Getting Started page. Open the Getting Started guide, and the direction that you want to follow here is under Step 1, Get Set Up. You want to add your application. You'll be prompted to log into Zero, and then you can add an application called 12D Synergy. As soon as you've added that application, Xero will provide you on screen with two important pieces of information that we can then use to link 12D Synergy with Xero. These two pieces of information are known as the Consumer Key and Consumer Secret. When you create the application in Xero for 12D Synergy, make sure that you select it as a private application. Connectors are downloaded from the 12D Synergy website at www.12dsynergy.com slash downloads slash connectors. They get installed through the 12D Synergy Administrator program. Run Synergy Administrator. Click on connectors and then install or upgrade connectors. Upload the connector from your hard drive in the location you previously downloaded it. You'll require a new 12D Synergy license that covers the connector. Speak to your 12D Synergy representative about the license. At this point you have the connector installed and you can begin using it. When you click on the connector you get the configuration screen for it. There's a number of different options in here and we'll run through each of them quickly. Clicking run now or run test will run the connector. You should never do the run now until after you've successfully done a test run and we'll explain more about how to do a test run. You can set the connector to run on a schedule that's how you'd make it run in the background of Synergy on a regular basis. You can choose which user in Synergy the connector runs as. So any changes uh, to jobs, folders, etc., or any files that are uploaded will appear as this user. Base API URL. This is a setting that you shouldn't need to change that helps uh, Synergy to know where to get information from in Zero. Consumer key and consumer secret are the settings that you got earlier on when you added an application within Zero. Next, there's the private key setting. This setting shouldn't be manually entered here. Instead, this is where you'd use the Generate Certificate button. This will pop up a window where you can enter various pieces of information about uh, your organization name. You should populate all of these details, and once you've done so, click the Generate Certificate button. This will offer you the Save dialog box where you need to choose a location on your computer to save this certificate file to. Here we've saved it on our desktop as zerocert.cer. You save that file.
and then you're told that the certificate has been generated. What you now need to do is upload that certificate into Xero. As you can see here, once the screen reloads, the private key has been populated with a value. The way that you upload that certificate to Xero is, log into the Xero developer portal, which is located at api.xero.com. Go into My Applications, and then select the 12D Synergy application that you created previously. There you can upload the public certificate, the .cer file that you generated. The final connector configuration setting on the screen here is Project. Xero has the ability to store files and folders. This project setting controls which job in Synergy your Xero files and folders are imported into. Next I'll demonstrate how to map the data you wish to import field by field into Synergy attributes. Before you start, spend some time understanding which data you want to import into Synergy. The data will consist of entities and fields. Entities such as jobs and contacts, fields such as name, create a date, phone number, etc. This is the data mapping tab. Here you can set up where in Synergy each of the external fields will get stored. You can see that it's broken down into job mappings, contact mappings, company mappings, task mappings, file mappings and folder mappings. So for example, here we have a company field in zero called company phone. We've chosen to map that across to an attribute in Synergy called phone and that's going to be of type string. Now we can use this screen to change that to a different attribute. You can either create a new attribute of any name you like or search and use any of your existing attributes. You can choose to leave attributes blank just by clicking on them and saying clear in which case that single field will not get imported into Synergy, it just gets skipped. The other option is that you may not want every entity to get imported, in which case you can change this imported column to do not import. So what that means is we're not going to bring contacts across into Synergy at all. The other useful feature here is Synergy's automatic mappings. If you click yes for this, it's going to show you a list of all the fields which currently haven't been mapped into Synergy. You can just click create and bulk and each of those attributes will get populated with their default name. It saves a lot of time. A useful feature to know about is that connectors can easily be hooked up to job templates. You can use a field that comes in from the external system that when mapped across to Synergy triggers your job template's match attribute. This means that when a matching job is imported into Synergy, it's automatically populated with the folders, attributes, files, tasks, etc. from your template. Let's say for example in Synergy you created a job template called Design Job Template. It had a match attribute of an attribute called Job Type, and it would successfully match when Job Type was set to Design. This would be an enum or list type attribute in Synergy. You could use the constants tab in the connector to always populate this attribute for imported jobs. And then when the connector created a new job, it would naturally utilize the design job template that you've created. Constants allow you to say that for any entity that's imported, set a given attribute value. Constants are not only available for use with job templates, but also with any other attributes and values you may wish to set. Before testing your connector, always run a backup of the Synergy server database. This gives you a fallback in case you configure the connector incorrectly and need to restore to this point in time. If the connector isn't configured correctly, then it could import a large amount of data into your system that isn't formatted the way you wish. Next, use the Run Test button, which allows you to import a small controlled amount of data from the other software product into Synergy. Go over this test data and check that the attributes are named the way you want them. As you can see, there are three different ways that you can select which data is imported from zero. The first is by choosing a company name and then that individual company will only be imported. 
or you can choose an individual contact name or an individual file name. The rest of the data from Zero will not be imported during the test run. A very useful feature that you should use at this time is the Logs tab. Here you can view the list of successful and unsuccessful imports. It allows you to review any problems that have occurred, fix them in the configuration and data mapping tabs, and then rerun the test. When you click on an item in the logs, you get the full message displayed. Finally, when you're happy with the imported test data, it's now time to set up the connector to run regularly and import all the data. You can do this by setting it to run on a schedule and you can set how often that schedule will run.